You're back in action now. You're feeling better and everything. And well, I I'm able to um, work outside, dig holes, and uh, I'm a, a bit sore when I do it, but nothing to stop me from working. I'm looking for something. I found, found a number of things that could be classified as hints. And the hints basically are um, leading the search based on the existence of the tutors. So any research... Do you mean by like a family call the tutors? Yeah. Royal family in England. Yeah. It's linked to the word door. Ador, rado, tutors, two doors. Double door. Their time frame is uh, mostly during the 1500s. And I think they were carrying out work started by Vikings. They have a relationship to Wales in Great Britain. There's a link to genetic engineering through Mary Magdalene, a link to Oxford University, which is the first university in the West, a link to um, Elizabeth and Mary and the, the um, Church of England. I do see the link to... Uh... Elizabeth and Mary. There's a link to a pope, to a pope too. Pope Saint Pius uh, was that the fifth, the V. That's yeah. one. Links um, to Catherine, which is basically the name of the the princess who just gave birth to George, who is uh, third in line to the throne. Kate, they call her for short, but Catherine was the widow of, uh, I think it was Henry V. So it's basically the beginning of Protestantism in England. So the Tudor family had a role in, I guess, starting like a division within the church? To hand over power to the Protestants. Oh. Because, um, a lot of things that the Vatican needed to do, it couldn't do under its own name. So they had to create Protestants. And in there you have, uh, in Germany, Martin Luther, who really was a Jesuit from the Vatican, and they were assigned the task to make it look like there was a breakup out of the Vatican and these were considered to be uh, enemies of the Catholic Church. But in fact, what they are is a group of people who were Catholics, but who undertook the task of doing things that would make it appear as if there was a breakup in the church. Protest ants. Yeah. Linked to the word ants which is basically the underground bees, A and B. And if you follow the events of the Catholic Church recently, they have not done too well at uh, inspiring Africans or South Americans in recent times. And it's said that the Church of England is recruiting Africans at a rate of about 10 to 1 against Catholics. And that's why the new pope from Argentina is uh, trying to do something to improve relations with South Americans and Africans. But you also have to remember that the last pope resigned, but only after going on a visit to North Africa, Northwest Africa, where the likelihood mm-hmm. he got orders, probably from the voodoo crowd. 
His resignation is something that resembles a resignation in past times where two people are fighting for the throne and uh, there's an agreement between the two of them that they'll step aside and let a third seemingly independent guard step in. It all depends when they're going to launch the Lou at the Sioux and its equivalent in uh, Europe. And some people in the cell have said that it's already been launched, but you haven't seen the total effects of it on land yet. What they're saying is, in effect, there can be no turnaround. That the flood has been launched, and it's only a matter of time before the effects are seen. The entire south, west, and uh, northeast of the United States is said to be flooded to a level where it could not take on any more water. But these seem to be the guys who've taken over from the Vikings and their main queens were Elizabeth and Mary. Mary is a symbol of genetic engineering. Eliza Beth. Beth means the home of, and E is the male, while A is the weeman. So it seems to be the last hurrah for males leading the world, and everything is being transferred women. According to the cell, what I'm looking for is not the ultimate discovery on this farm, but the penultimate discovery, which leads to the discovery of the ultimate. And they believe that it would be a box, and the box would contain ancient coins that when put in the proper order describes the plan for the time frame from the ice age to the heat age divided down the middle with the year zero and the birth of Christianity. So 4,000 B.C. to zero is the preparation of the plan, and zero to 4,000 is the completion of the plan. Now, we know that in order to move the plan forward, the northern hemisphere's six billion people has to be removed for all intents and purposes, leaving to the period of 3,000 the the survival of one billion people in the southern hemisphere. And that's why they're describing Brazil, which is a Portuguese establishment, in the same way as is Japan. And the Portuguese have established Brazil to be the headquarters for the last thousand years, along with South Africa and Australia and New Zealand. So everything which is north of the eighth parallel, which includes India and China, and south of the 53rd parallel is uh, is to be destroyed. What it appears is that this box of coins as a set would be worth a lot more than as individual coins. 
and it was reportedly taken out of uh, the Middle East into Germany, into the hands of the Vikings who lost it for a while. The Vikings, by the way, are the Danes, Great Danes, and uh, brought to North America about uh, 500 years before the Tudors. Vikings basically lost their control because they were relatively um, unsophisticated, if you will. And the power that they held in genetic engineering coming out of Germany was transferred through the Tudors which basically begin in Wales, which has the same letters in the code as Alem in Jerusalem, where the M is flipped upside down to make a W. So you have uh, A-L-E-M or W-A-L-E. On CNN, they uh, they released a documentary on the, uh, it was called Blackfish, talking about uh, killer whales, and they said that yeah, this... yeah, I saw I saw some uh, commercials on it. It's basically uh, it's not a whale. Eh? It's it's that other fish that's intelligent. There. Are, uh, a kill a dolphin, dolphin a killer whale they call it. It's a dolphin. It's in the family of dolphins, but they call it a whale because of its size. But oh. supposed to be a um, a symbol representing China. Oh. Like they have the bear, which is black and white and cuddly, and they have the military, which is the whale. And what they're suggesting in the whale is that you go stir-crazy if you have all of the information but are basically not allowed to use it. And that's what happened with China is they had all of the information on genetic engineering and and writing and everything that was needed to go forward, numbers, but because they were all manufactured with read-only memory, they could not handle the task of developing a space program, so they were parked based upon passing their knowledge through Marco Polo to the West and receiving, in return, interest on everything that was being done and that interest to disguise what it's all about was called taxes. So... They basically depend on the Americans to borrow from them and from their taxes pay back a sum of money equal to what China did in passing over power, which is about one-twelfth of the economy has to be turned over to China. So... Interest on loans is how the money is transferred back to China, but in fact it's looked upon as taxes by the people of democratic country. And uh, debts and deficits are what make it up. And that transfer of money back to China kept them parked as far as competing with the West 
until the end times. And now you have a situation where China and Japan, who are basically divisions of the same people, with Korea in the middle, they are, in fact, the holders of the debts of the United States and uh, are the only people who have money to keep the U.S. and Europe going. The U.S. listening to the type of conversation like we're having now uh, in 2002 began to spy on what they considered to be who's in charge in Europe, which is Germany, the only one who had competing surpluses. And now you have Angela Merkel coming back saying, you've been spying on me, you've got to stop that. What she's not saying is that the Germans, because they had two world wars which were set up for practical purposes ended up after each war sending migrants out of Germany which was basically flattened twice to live in other countries in the world you got a, a large German population in in the United States, we have a large German population here. But each person that comes as a migrant from Germany is really a spy. They receive a pension from Germany, what is uh, equivalent to about beer money every month. And in return, they're supposed to buy... German products and visit Germany uh, on a uh, regular basis, bringing back information that can be used by German security about what's happening in the country where they live. So they're basically evidence collectors. Uh, Rather than doing it over the telephone, they do it with people. So when they're putting on a show that they're disgusted at the U.S. spying on them, they know damn well the U.S. is fully aware of how the Germans spy on the world. Now, if if you remember your history, Germany did not just happen. Germany was transferred out of the Middle East during the diaspora. And it became the central uh, place where the knowledge known by Israelis was uh, practiced. They built the universities in Germany. They trained uh, Israelis for different parts of the world everything until the beginning of the 1900s. And then they had a whole bunch of uh, Israelis change their religion to Christianity to hide the fact of who they really were. And they accused, of course, the West of developing a society of Nazis who threatened them if they didn't become Christians. But in fact, that was the plan all along. They basically just did what uh, Protestants did in Christianity. They did it to Judaism. They became what appeared to be Protestants in the Judaic religion. That's what Christians are. Protestants from Judaism. And then the East did the same thing and changed Judaism into Islam. 
to get back to having nastier people, people who are more likely to uh, do what the system wants, be friendly to the system in the East, while the equivalent in the West would be nunneries. That's why Islam is the word in French, ami, A-M-I-S, and an S and an L both can be number one. And nuns, uh, the new ones, are known as uh, sisters and friends of the system like Ami, friend in the basic method that in the word friend, after the F, which you don't read, you have R-I-E-N, and in French, rien means none. None of this, none of that which is the same thing as the word they use, N-U-N, phonetically. So the nuns and, and uh, and Islam perform the same role, one in the East, the other in the West. And their job is to make babies who will infiltrate the workforce and provide the media with uh, news stories, leak information, that kind of stuff. And when they need a good mass murder or uh, serial rapist on the loose, they know which one to turn on. That's why everybody keeps reporting in the media I would never have believed this person was capable of doing that. Of course, this person was genetically engineered with a task orientation that was made dormant. And when the time comes, can be turned on, on demand. They all agree to follow the instructions and they become workers in the National Security Agency and their suppliers. They become uh, workers in social services because those are the two places from which they can control people better outside of the military. You know, Glenn, New I York would... is the principal place for making those types of people. And that's why the Yankees broadcasting network is called Yes, as opposed to the Japanese who have no. No theater. No theater. You know, Glenn, I was in the, the Department of Labor, and I noticed the... I don't know if it was just me, because I I read a a post that you and Jenny put out basically detailing the whole social services and their role and their and their uh their their way of uh figuring out people's genetics and placing them in certain areas and I I noticed that it just the people in the office in, in in that area, the people who worked in there, they they all they seemed different. Like they all didn't seem the way they. It could just be me, I don't know, but they all seemed to look a little different from people I usually see in like other like types of businesses. Have that copper light thing in them. Like they all have that same attitude and look as like a, a police officer. You know, yeah, kind of. These people were very different. They were, well, of course, most of them were, were uh, females, but they yeah. just the way, even the way they were shaped, like you know, it was. 
Well, they they have common genetics, and it's all so that they react uh, equally, uh, disregard common sense. Yeah. And, was, yeah. and apply apply rules that would make no sense whatsoever to a person who would have common sense. That's what I noticed. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that when I was talking to a, a, a lady who was assigned to me, she, it's like, yeah, she didn't have common sense, and she kept repeating the same thing over and over to me. Yeah. It was... What we learned while Jennifer was there is that uh, when you're unemployed and you go to welfare, they send you to a class where uh, you're supposed to learn how to make a uh, resume, for example. And Uh and when you go and make the resume, uh, they tell you it needs adjustment, and they'll remake it for you. And what they do is, depending on what they have established is the person's uh, genetic makeup, they convert the fonts used in that person's uh, resume to letters, fonts, that would be understood by people who are hiring at uh, uh, those places controlled by human resource divisions. The human resource person looks at the resume and says, this person was made to do this particular job. And since it's illegal to do that in the corporation or uh, government or whatever who's doing the hiring, their human resource people contact the American Association for Human Resources. And that's the group who keeps the records. And therefore, every company goes to the same place to get an evaluation by people who keep the records on genetic engineering. And they are then told, yes, you can hire this person, or no, you can't hire this person for that job, or no, you cannot hire this person at all. We don't want that person in your group. And the people who work on the genetic engineering directly are doing their work in Maryland. It's linked to NSA and it's linked to the Navy. And Maryland is linked to of course, memory in the word Mam Mary. And I noticed in the post, too, you, because uh, th- this is what happens to me, they, because they say, you know, it's illegal to, to ask a person, um, what is it, uh, I think their background as far as um, nationality and stuff. Yeah, but what they do, yeah, but what they do is they take your social security number, which gives them everything about you. Yeah. Well, they'll say they're hiring you, and they'll, they're using affirmative action, so they need to know what your creed is and your race. So, so but that's what all that uh, you're talking about is when you're waiting for your background check results, right? That's what they're doing? Yeah. Yeah. Because the lady asked for my social security number, and I said, why do you need that? Because I need to know who you are. Yeah. But, you know, I, because I just, the person doing the hiring yeah. is not legally allowed, based on human rights laws, uh, to do certain investigations. 
and therefore they have to pass it on to the Association of Human Rights, their human relations gang, and these people go through the the uh, examination of who you are, where you were made, who passed on the genetic material to your uh, birthing mother, whether that be uh, the one you know or the genetic one that could have been passing it on uh, one, two, three, or four generations before, and therefore they know exactly the product that they have. Got to remember we're at the end times now where it's almost time to destroy six billion people, so they've finished their testing. They don't need to do any more. They know who everybody is and where they could be used and how to use them, but not locally, more through the national associations of uh, human resources. And when the federal government operates a Department of Human Resources, they, in fact, are hiring people they know without a doubt what their genetic makeup is. And when you have a department like social services, you got to have people who are brain dead for all intents and purposes who operate on nothing resembling common sense and policemen who operate on nothing but fascism, Nazis. And in the church, they call them saints. Saint and Nazi is the same word, backwards. You run to the church where the people there have similar backgrounds. They can hear your pleas and tell you they can't do anything for you, or they can kind of work you through a project that will give them all the information you have gathered. Pakistan, uh, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, it's all the word Nazi. It all comes from around the Himalayas. Uh, in another post that you, that you posted, you, you, the way you spelt this word, because I've been researching you know, the other spelling of the word, when you use it, you think of another thing. It, you, the way you spelled navel-gazing, you spelled yeah. it with it, uh, N-A-V-A-L. Yeah. And usually when people say na- navel-gazing, it's N-A-V-E-L. And that's like the whole, you know, it's known as extreme introspection. When people, are, you know, I see a lot of that on the Internet, a lot of people who seem to be really self-absorbed in, in their, they claim to really be enlightened, but they kind of really, they, they focus too much on them, on, on, on themselves, on introspection. When there's, we got to remember that the Navy's original name was Phoenician. And when the Phoenicians brought people to different parts of the world, the first thing they did was establish a communications company known as phones, telephone, Hmm. and you will do their service. L.A. Phonation. Hmm. What did you mean by naval gazing? When you well, spell it that way, it what basically reverses the project. Don't look inside of you for oh. anything else but your genetic makeup. But the people who know what your genetic makeup is is the Navy. Naval. 
that word they they say I think it's like in India they said like the mystics the the, the reason why they called it navel gaze it didn't originally have a bad connotation but the reason why they called it navel gaze is because I think when you looked at the navel, it was like kind of symbolic of where kind of you came from or your beginning. Yeah. And remember that females in the Navy are called waves, which waves. has ave. A V E. Ave is virgin birth. Ave Maria, the way of Mary, virgin birth. It's all linked, all serves their purpose. But the important thing right now is I'm told that this box of coins, should I locate it, and some of the uh, um, hints that I have discovered uh, in digging uh, suggest that I'm close. But they don't know what close means in the sense of are you two inches away from it or two feet or two yards or uh, two acres? Close can mean whatever the people who wrote the code meant by it. But I've come across a number of um, pieces of evidence that make no sense whatsoever. It seems as if this house was uh, built based upon a shelf life of 41 years and that it was built by people who had the concept of tutors and Tudor design as part of what they did, using crossbars and beams and angles that are perpendicular, 90 degrees. And therefore, when you understand that Tudor coding, you can read things in the way this house was built, which is perfectly set with the west in front, the east in the back, uh, the north on the right side, the south on the left side if you're looking out the front door. Now, years ago when I first came here, I had dug the front lawn you guys have seen the, the hole that was on the front lawn, trying to figure out where the water was coming to that entered the basement. And some pump at times of the year when water shouldn't be running. And I couldn't find anything there, but I did find hints such as the bamboo tree that is from China wouldn't grow here uh, accidentally, had been planted, and the 49 Sitka spruce that line the um, the roadside, which is something supposed to line an ocean side in the north. I did discover that. Then when I worked on the north side, I found materials that pointed the finger to the number 11, two ones, and I found uh, reinforced rebar uh, patio stones. Uh, Reinforced concrete uh, is normally used in an area that will hold a lot of weight. Certainly patio stones don't make any sense because There really is nothing of any weight on a patio that requires reinforcement with steel bars, but they in fact built a cement plant 
just down the road here at Highway 43 across from the little church, and their specialty was building patio stones that were reinforced. So something in the neighborhood has a lot of weight on it, and it ain't patios. So my suggestion is any floors located underground would have to be reinforced if they were bringing in uh, a lot of material from Europe and hiding it here, including, you know, vaults with uh, precious stones and and gold and that kind of stuff. Uh, but it could also, if you're going to build a storage place for um, people and growing food and stuff like that, would require reinforcement. And that would explain what's going on underground. I also uh, found uh, signs that I was in the right general area when uh, all across the uh, western side of the building, uh, yellow bricks were found underground. But when you look at the house itself, there is nothing built with yellow bricks. Everything that's built with brick, which have to do with the chimneys of the fireplaces, are red bricks. So yellow bricks have to be a symbol of something else. And follow the yellow brick road. When you go, I'm off to see the wizard the wonderful wizard of O's, Ottawa, Oshawa, Ontario, Oswego. Where did Jennifer live? Ogdensburg. Mm -hmm. Ogdensburg. The land of O's. Oxford Mills. Oxford Station. Oxford University. Ontario. Oh, Canada, oh, say can you see. Oh, my. Oh, my. Look at that. Surprise, surprise. So I'm um, finding things that make no sense. When you build a house you know that the foundation is underground. And you know that water surrounding a concrete foundation will, over time, break it down, break the cement back down to its component parts and will crack and leak. So what you do is you place a big pipe about six to eight inches, plastic with metal wire reinforcement, and you put holes in the top so that water coming down from rain, making it through the land, ends up on this pipe when it's near the foundation, goes in the pipe, and then the pipe leads it to the place where you have a, a sump hole and then a pump pumps it back out to a place uh, designed for that called a field, a septic field. The problem with this house is that it has, in fact, had this pipe put in backwards so that the water coming into the pipe goes to the opposite end of the house from the sump pump. And then its only journey can and has to be 
under the house or through the house. And whenever there's a power failure and the sump pump is not working and water is running those times of the year, we have had flooding in the basement. Part of the flooding has come out of the sump pump because there's no power to make it work. But uh, water has come in under the door at the stairway at the other side of the building where this pipe comes in. So the house was, in fact, built to be destroyed. If you look at the house, it's probably the only house you'll find that has no sheetrock divisions between the rooms in the place. Everything in the house is wood. That wood burns quickly. Yeah, your house is very, uh, like, weak. It doesn't seem like it's meant to be there for a long time. No, and its time has run out. And that's why there's such a problem. The insurance company canceled our insurance. Why? We've been paying insurance for 13 years to them, never made a claim, and they cancel our insurance. Well, there can only be two reasons for them canceling our insurance. The cell investigating them said, when we bought insurance 13 years ago, part of our insurance policy is flood insurance. And since they're about to flood the areas of the northern hemisphere, they have been telling people recently that there's no such thing as flood insurance in your regular insurance policy. The only way you can get flood insurance, they say, is uh, with a government-subsidized insurance for flood. Well, a government-subsidized just means the government, who has no money, is getting money that it can pay back on the debt if you are buying flood insurance. But when the time comes to pay, they won't have the money to pay. The second thing is, if you need to get rid of it in a hurry because your plan is being delayed, as I suggest and and the cell agrees, the destruction of North America was planned to begin in 2011, November 11th. 2011, and they have a four-year window, if one believes the Masonic beginning of our world as 4004 B.C., that means 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015 Everything has to be done before 2016. And they're already two years into it, 12 and 13. So now the window is closing over the next two years. And if somebody lit a fire and we had no insurance, they don't have to pay for reconstruction here. And then only one kind of person would buy the property, and that's someone who is planning something different for the property that doesn't require a house because they have all the houses they need in the area And guess who that happens to be? Mr. Snowden, 
the same name as the guy leaking the information in the U.S. and the same name as the um, area of uh, the island of Montreal where the um, Jewish community lives, where they cut up a piece of a Chinese guy and sent the parts to the prime minister and to the Liberal Party and to a university in B.C. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, I remember uh, uh, on related things, what what was that thing all about that happened, uh, I think it was last week or the week before, something, there was a box that they found in in Ottawa and over there, and they shut, um, I think they... uh, it was like a, I think it was another government building that they found. They found some type of box. They didn't know if it was a bomb or something. Or well, they, they often come across things that they suspect might be designed to blow up and uh, evacuate people from the airport or bus station or whatever. But the box that we're looking for and I'm looking for um, (laughs) would contain coins that are as few as a hundred and and could be more but if they are only one hundred then each coin would be as long as the set is complete a million dollars each, and therefore one hundred million dollars if there were a hundred coins a hundred million dollars this happens to be the budget that the cell and I worked out on what needs to be done on the farm here uh, in building the project that digs down plus a place for the 13 equivalent to the Ford Mansion in Ogdensburg, and then uh, the farm uh, house and the rebuilding of the outside of this house to make it into a kind of a tourist museum of how we started out here, that kind of stuff. And uh, so... $100 $100 million would solve that problem without any bank being able to trace who's financing the sale. The problem that they have in giving just straight cash is it leaves a road map. But a box of coins worth $100 million would solve the problem. And the hints that I've discovered point, according to the cell, to the fact that we're in the general area. But you know, human beings are not like worms. They can't see through the earth. So you could be an inch away from something and not know it. Creation's got to play a role in this by by collapsing certain areas that we haven't dug, but could cause a collapse if there was a proper earthquake or something, and would kind of expose what we're looking for. Push in the right direction. And all these people who are causing us trouble and who have done everything to prevent us from succeeding still haven't got it in their mind that, quote, unquote, God is a higher power, but not the highest power. Highest is creation. And creation's going to have a little chat with all of these people who have hindered the progress of moving 
people out of here to the f- fifth universe. It seems the word God, it seems to just define by definition from what I've seen. It defines a hijacker. And it seems like this <coughs> word God, seems, it seems to have been, it, it's, it's passed on. Like it's, it's like a, a title, a job that's been passed on from Neanderthal then to computers and then uh, priests, uh, genetic engineers, then to a system as a whole. It becomes, it starts to become, I guess, kind of vague. According to the cell, the word God comes from dog written backwards because Mirror imaging is always an important difference between the Eastern culture and the Western culture. Writing left to right or right to left is important to them. If you take that as a fact that God is a dog, then you have to go the next step and say, if the most ancient matron is a nun. And a nun operates in a world where they are genetically engineered as fascists or Nazis and saints. The word Nazi, phonetically N-A-T-S-I, is true then what you're looking at is female dogs. And female dogs are known in English as bitches. So when you have a woman who no longer carries a task orientation based upon the security of the entire village, such as did a clan mother, and is more interested in self-service, both in receiving things and in power. That matches the description of women because they are, in fact, no longer women. They are Nazis, fascists. They want to accumulate things for personal reasons. And they act in a manner that can be described as well as bitches. So you work it out from there. Who is God? Who would fit? the description of God, most ancient matron. In the world of planets, the one closest to the sun is Mercury. In French, Mère Curie, the mother priest, the priestess, most ancient matron, mother superior, lake superior, superintendent. Everything that has the word super is linked to soup. And what did the Bible call what was being given to men at the time Abraham suggested be passed on from the Arab son to the Israeli son, it was called the mess of potash. Mess of potash is soup. It's a fish stew or soup. So those people who deal with the word superintendent, for example, or superior propane, or 
or Mother Superior, all are linked to this mess of potash. On a planet such as Earth that has these pieces of land that float around, you cannot have a supernova, which means the explosion of the whole because the energy is dissipated through these pieces of land but you can have a simple nova. A nova is a stew, a soup of black fish. A fish set up with staying behind and wants to come forward and take over command as they did in the wild could be compared to China who passed its power on to Marco Polo. Marco Polo. Mark is the Ark. Noah's Ark. Polo is the Lou. The second flood. The flood of two floods. One flood of water. One flood without water. What is a flood without water? Gas. Radon gas. At the end times, the signs will be all around. Guess what? If you don't believe the end times, then deny that the signs are all around. Can't be done. Have the numbers reached what is required for a perfect lab study on genetic engineering? They insist that World War II brought about the assassination of six million Jews. But that was only used as a number to describe what is about to happen Six billion people must die. Mm. And therefore, until you had seven billion, it couldn't happen. Now you do have seven uh, billion. And, that, and that's also linking it to uh, the Caucasian, because I remember you saying that most uh, all white people come from uh, are Jewish because they come from the Abrianic branch. That's from that diaspora. And yeah. um, born in Georgia <laughs> or next door neighbor to Georgia. And what is the name of the new prince? Born to William and Kate George. What is the word George but regal? Go back in time. Do it again. What are you going to do again but flood revenue, revenue, do it again to Venus, (laughs) revenue Canada, Mm. our version of the IRS. Mm. You don't mind being clearer in Canada because the people here were not born mostly with standalone memory, but were born to basically only read stuff. Whereas the space program needed that random access, standalone memory, and therefore. If you spoke of all the things they speak of in Canada, in the U.S., too many people would catch on. They brought them in from all over. The best random access memories in the world had taken up residence in Germany and Japan. Who's doing the space program? 
Germans and Japanese. Japanese deal with chemistry. The Germans deal with technology. Genetic engineering requires both. The Japanese deal in miniaturization. Can't go into space without miniaturizing everything. Everybody built rockets bigger and bigger and bigger while the U.S. made their rockets smaller and smaller and smaller. Same effect, less weight to get off the ground. More technology. Little trees grown on a tabletop. So there you are. Yeah. Lesson for the day, unless you have a question to ask. I got to prepare for bedtime. All right. All right. Talk to you again. Okay. Bye for now. Yeah.